So politicians do have a lot of power to present things to us in a way that they hope will make us think about these things favorably. So no one is going to say, hey, there's this policy that I want, and it's going to cost a whole bunch of money and probably not do very much, right? They're not going to pitch it to us that way. They're going to say, hey, there's this policy I want, and it could help you, right? So they're telling us a way to think about the story. Now, the media can do the exact same thing. So they have the power, they have sort of three tools to help uh, to shape the news and how we then ultimately perceive it. They're framing, priming, and agenda setting. So framing is basically saying that they don't have to change our underlying attitudes. They don't have to persuade us. But what they can do is they can pick a way of framing the story, of telling the story that sort of by giving a context or a background tells us to think about it in a different light with different attitudes brought to bear. So they can tell us to think about welfare as social engineering or as aid to the poor. And if you think about those terms, right, social engineering doesn't sound very good. It sounds like a bad thing, right? So you're probably going to bring attitudes to bear on how you feel about social engineering and the sort of scary, you know, like, oh, the government's trying to, like, manipulate our social structures or something versus aid to the poor, which generally people think sounds good, right? Yeah, that that's helpful. Like, the government should help the poor. So by framing the story in a certain way, by giving us that context, that specific way of looking at it, they're telling us not to change our mind about welfare, but to think about different things when we think about welfare. Now, this is related to both agenda setting and priming. Agenda setting is when they tell us what different issues to focus on when evaluating politicians. So they may just talk about one issue a lot, a lot, a lot. And so we think that issue must be really important. They're talking about it all the time. We should think about it when we go vote. So in 2016, during the presidential election, we heard an awful lot about Clinton's emails and Trump's sexist comments. That wasn't necessarily telling us how to think about Clinton's emails or Trump's sexist comments, but it told us to think about those things when we evaluated Clinton and Trump. Finally, we have priming. Priming is tapping into our underlying predispositions and feelings. So this is telling us how to feel about something, how to think about something. Now, this is often related to framing in that framing can be used to give us a context that evokes certain primed responses. So uh, framing, for example, the conflict in Ukraine in terms of how it echoes the Cold War might tap into certain primed feelings about that era in boomers and the greatest generation, people who were alive for the Cold War, than it will for younger people, millennials and uh, Gen Xers to an extent, certainly millennials and Gen Zers who don't remember the Cold War. Oh, they're going to have probably not a ton of priming there. It's not going to tap into many attitudes, that particular frame for uh, younger folks. So we can see that priming, priming, framing and priming are inherently linked together, as is agenda setting, but they are sort of three different but related com concepts. So again, framing gives a context or background. Priming taps into these underlying predispositions and feelings. And then agenda setting tells you which issues to focus on and sort of by default, which issues not to focus on uh, because it's not focusing on them. So the media then has this real power using these three tools to tell us how to ultimately evaluate our politicians by framing stories in certain ways, by tapping into certain underlying um, attitudes, and by telling us which stories to even focus on in the first place.